in grade 12. If we look at this theory now, in your textbook, it is on page 19. All right, so if you have a textbook, your textbook is open in front of you when you're listening to this lesson, watching this lesson. Or if you don't have a textbook, you would have received your chapter 6 notes this morning. Okay, obviously those of you that are not coming to school, we will arrange when you can come and fetch all of your copies, near the hard copies. So if you don't have a textbook, you take out the notes I gave you this morning and you follow on those notes as I teach the content. Yeah, that is how it's going to work from now on, like we normally would have done in class. Okay, so the next topic we're looking at just is profit. Okay, remember we are still busy in a perfect market. Only in the next chapter are we going to look at the imperfect market structures. So we look at profit now quickly. The theory obviously stays exactly the same. Regardless of the market structure, profit is a profit, a loss is a loss. Okay, but the graphs obviously will look different for each and every market structure. So when we refer to profit, profit is the positive difference between revenue and costs. Okay, so obviously we take your total revenue minus your total cost to get the total profit. Or we can also look at average revenue and average cost. Né? Average revenue minus average cost gives you the profit or the loss per unit, né, per article that you are selling. Now, I said in the lesson that you just listened now, the how to draw a graph lesson, I mentioned that whether the business makes a profit or a loss, on a graph, it depends on the location of the average cost curve. So all of the graphs, when we draw the graphs, they look exactly the same up to the point where we're going to add the average cost. The minute that we add the average cost, that is what's going to determine whether a business is going to make a profit or a loss. Now, in terms of profit, we distinguish between a normal profit and an economic profit. Right, today we're going to look at the normal profit. In the short run, okay, we're going to look at short run equilibrium positions, and then we're also going to look in another lesson at the long run equilibrium position. So when we talk about the short run, just remember the short run is that period of time when at least one of our inputs will be fixed. Okay, it will normally be your factory, for example. Now in the short run, you don't have enough time or money, whatever, to build another factory or to expand your factory. So the short run, and remember, we're not putting any particular period of times to this, but when we refer to the short run, it means that there's one of our inputs that is fixed. Now, for the perfect market, in the short run, individual businesses, there can be three different profit maximization positions. Okay, in the short run, your individual producer can make a normal profit, they can make an economic profit, and they can make an economic loss. But in the long run, the individual business can only make a normal profit. Now, the next couple of lessons, the, the questions that we are busy with now, okay, the three different profit maximization positions, that is a possible essay question. All right, if you can draw the graphs, this is the easiest essay question ever, if you can draw the graphs and you understand the graphs. If you don't understand the graphs, this is an essay question that you steer clear of. Okay. But if you follow the recipe, if you follow my steps, if you practice the graphs, you draw them with me, there's no way that you're not going to understand. And as I said, these lessons will stay on Teams. You can keep them on your phones. Before you write exams, you can listen to this lesson again and again and again. Yeah? Through repetition comes understanding. All right. You can't just listen to something once and say, okay, but I don't understand. We listen. We practice. We listen again and again, okay? The more you interact with your content, the better your understanding is going to become, okay? But these three profit maximization positions, now the normal profit, the economic profit, and the economic loss, together, it constitutes an essay question, okay? So this is very, very important. You are going to write this essay for me also in the next activity, okay? Okay. So for today, we're just going to look at normal profit. All right. So what is normal profit? We did this last year also. Normal profit is the minimum earnings required 
to prevent the entrepreneur from leaving his business and applying his factors of production elsewhere. Okay, now remember, right at the beginning of this chapter, we revised your explicit costs and your implicit costs. Okay, and we also did this in grade 11. Now, an entrepreneur is a person like any other person. Okay, now any business, okay, those accounting people, now if you do accounting, you know that a business only draws up an income statement once a year at the end of their financial year, okay? So you will only work out once a year at the end of the financial year if the business has made a profit or not. Now remember, if we think of the remuneration for the production factors, for labor, people get paid wages and salaries. For capital, we earn interest. For natural resources, we will receive rent. The entrepreneur, his payment is profit, okay? Now, every other person working in the business will be earning a wage or a salary. Every day they go into work and they, they do their work and whatever. At the end of the week, at the end of the month, they will receive their payment, which means they have money to go and satisfy their needs with. The entrepreneur is also a person. He is also going to work. He's also putting in effort, probably more than everybody else as the owner, okay? He cannot wait until the end of the business's financial year to see if the business actually even has made a profit before he actually gets money, okay? He's also a person. He also has needs to satisfy. He has to eat. He has children. He has to pay school fees. He has to buy them clothes and pay for the extramural activities. He has to pay for his car. He has to pay for his transport, okay? He has expenses also. So just like your normal workers will want to receive money at the end of the week or the end of the month, so does the entrepreneur, okay? Technically, if the business makes a profit, he is entitled to take that profit. But as I said, he cannot wait until the end of the financial year to see if he's going to get any money or not. Every month when he pays his, the rest of these workers, he's also going to pay himself, okay? Just because we are economists, we cannot call it a salary because he's the entrepreneur, his remuneration is not wages and salaries. His remuneration is profit, okay? But he has to pay himself for the effort that he's putting into this business. Otherwise, if he gets nothing, January, he gets no money. February, he gets no money. March, he gets no money. April, he gets no money. Now, he cannot live like that. He's going to say, stuff it. I'm closing this business that is giving me nothing. I'm rather going to work for somebody else, and then I can earn a wage or a salary. Okay? So the normal profit, and you are never going to put it like this. Okay? But just so that you can understand what it is, his normal profit is in inverted commas, the salary that he pays himself. We are just not going to call it a salary because an entrepreneur gets paid profit. In accounting, you're going to call it a salary. Okay, That's the difference between accounting and economics. But in economics, we know entrepreneurship is rewarded with profit, not a salary. Okay, So his salary, in inverted commas, that he pays himself, that is what we refer to as his normal profit. Now, a business will make a normal profit if his revenue covers all of its costs. Okay, But with those costs, we're referring to both explicit and implicit costs. Your explicit costs are the actual expenditures of the business. Okay, so things that they've actually paid. They've made an EFT. They wrote out a check. Now, there is a source document that exists to prove the existence of this transaction. Explicit costs, yeah? things that he actually had to pay, like the wages and salaries of the workers, like the interest on his loan, like the cost of raw materials, the rent for his factory. Those are things that he really, really, really pays, and there will be a source document to prove it. His implicit costs, that is where the normal profit comes in. His implicit cost is acceptable remuneration 
for the entrepreneur himself. Okay. Remember we said in grade 11, the implicit cost is the opportunity cost for his production factors. What he could have earned if he didn't run his own business, but he was working for somebody else. For example, yeah, the salary he could have earned if he worked for somebody else. But now he isn't because he's doing this. Okay. So these implicit costs will be, in inverted commas, the salary that he pays himself, the remuneration that the entrepreneur pays himself to stay in this industry. Because if he earns nothing, there's no way in hell he's staying in this industry. He will close down the business and he's going to go elsewhere. Okay, He will apply his factors of production elsewhere. Okay, so his normal profit is the minimum earnings that the entrepreneur pays himself, the remuneration that he pays himself for his input in his own business, okay? Because if he earns nothing, he wouldn't stay. He will close down the business. It's to keep him in this industry, okay? So if we say that a business makes a normal profit when his revenue covers all of its costs, when we refer to costs, we refer to both the explicit costs, the actual expenditure, plus the implicit cost, which is the remuneration of the entrepreneur, the normal profit. Okay, so basically a firm will make a business, will make a normal profit if total revenue equals total cost, so all my costs equals my total revenue, or his average revenue equals his average cost. Now, as I said in the previous lesson, we are not going to work with totals, we are going to work with averages. All right, we are now going to draw the graph, okay? But if we are saying that for a business to make a normal profit, you'll see it's there at the bottom, okay? For a business to make a normal profit, his total revenue has to be equal to his total cost, exactly equal, okay? Or his average revenue has to be exactly equal to his average cost. Now, on a graph, two concepts are equal if they intersect or they touch at a particular point, okay? When we draw the graph now, you're going to see the average cost at profit maximization. Everything revolves around that profit maximization point. Your average cost must intersect or it must, in this case, it's lying on top of your average revenue, okay? It's tangent, in other words, okay? That means at this point E, you will see that your average cost touches there, that's my pink graph, and my average revenue, the green graph, it touches, all of the graph touches there at point E. That means that my average cost equals my average revenue, and that means that a normal profit is being made. If a business breaks even, now remember if my cost equals my revenue, the business will break even. It will look like there is no profit. But in economics, there's never no profit. If it looks like no profit, it is a normal profit. The entrepreneur doesn't receive nothing. He receives his normal profit. He receives that remuneration that he pays himself every month. And that is included in his total cost, okay? So if my total cost and my total revenue is equal, he still is getting his normal profit. He's not getting nothing. He's getting his normal profit. Okay, we are now going to draw the graph. You are drawing the graph with me. Okay, so in your workbook, you're going to draw a line. You're going to pause this video now so that you can take out your workbook and then you open your workbook you write today's date and you write the first heading is the three profit maximization positions of the individual producer under perfect competition. I'm going to say it again. Your heading, because we're going to draw all three graphs, just not all three today. Okay. The profit maximization positions of the individual producer under conditions of perfect competition. And once your heading and everything is done, now you play the video, you draw this graph with me. And at the end of this period, you are going to send me a photo. You can upload it to Teams or you can send it to me over WhatsApp. But I want to see proof that you have drawn this graph 
with me. Okay, so straight away, at the end of this period, as soon as you are finished, you're going to take a, pro a picture and you either upload it onto Teams or you send it to me over WhatsApp. But I want to see that you have drawn this graph with me. If I'm going to fast, you pause and you catch up. Okay, so we're first going to draw the axis. And we label the axis. Okay, your vertical axis is always cost and revenue. It will be in rand. And your horizontal axis is your output, your quantity. Okay, output is always in quantity. And then you have your secret recipe next to you on your table. All right, your how to draw a graph, because we're going to follow those steps now. Okay, our heading is individual producer. your individual producer and this will be we are drawing first a normal profit All right, that's your heading. Okay, then when we start drawing the graph, I don't have that many colors, or oh, I can take more. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to draw, if you look on your instructions, step one is we have to draw demand and average revenue and marginal revenue. We are in the perfect market. Okay, so we know in the perfect market, Okay, you try and get your line as straight as possible. Then you use your ruler. I can't do that. Okay, you draw a straight line. That is your demand curve and your average revenue curve and also your marginal revenue curve. Okay, so one horizontal line. Step one is we have to draw demand and average revenue and marginal revenue. In the perfect market, we know each individual producer is a price taker. The shape of his demand curve is perfectly elastic. Okay, so in other words, a horizontal line. Okay, and because of him being a price taker, remember he cannot change the price. The price is constant. The market would have determined the price. Okay, let's say the market said the price is 10 Rand. Okay, so at the level of the market price, your demand is a perfectly elastic demand curve. And remember we said your demand curve is always, in all market structures, equal to average revenue. And because the price is constant, you're in the perfect market only. Your price is also equal to your marginal revenue. So in the perfect market, one horizontal, perfectly elastic graph represents your demand curve your average revenue curve, as well as your marginal revenue curve. This is step one. Step two is we are going to add marginal cost. Okay, so step two, we add marginal cost. Remember, it looks like the Nike swishy, so we just do it. It must intersect with your demand curve. All right, and then we label. Okay, immediately when you draw your graph, you label it before you forget about the labeling. And then there's no label, there's no marks. Okay, 
you add your marginal cost curve. That is step two. Once we have added marginal cost, we have to go to step three. All right, in step three, we said we have to find profit maximization point. Profits are always maximized where my marginal cost curve, my blue one, and my marginal revenue curve, the red one, where they are equal, so where they intersect. You make a bolliki, and if we don't see your bolliki, you don't get the mark. Okay, there has to be a bolliki. You make your bolliki, and then you label it point E. All right, we have now found profit maximization point, but at profit maximization point, we need to find the price and the quantity. Because this is the perfect market, the price is already there. If you forgot to give it a price when you drew your demand curve, you give it a price now. Okay, I'm using numbers because I'm going to show you the calculations at the same time. Okay, but we have to find the quantity. The quantity is the horizontal axis, so we need to go down. All right, we just find a value. Okay, we're going to say that this guy will be willing to produce 100 articles. It's profit maximization price. Profit maximizing output is 100. And up to this point, every single graph is going to look exactly the same. Okay? Step four is to add the average cost. Okay, we're going to add an average cost graph now. All right. When we add the average cost... Obviously, remember your shape of your average cost. It looks like a smiley, yeah, a smiley face, but it has to intersect with marginal cost. Marginal cost has to intersect average cost at the bottom of average cost. And we want this guy to make a normal profit. So when we make a normal profit, remember we said the average cost and the average revenue must be equal at profit maximization point. Okay, so if we want average cost and average revenue to be equal at my profit maximization point, remember this red graph represents my average revenue, that means that my average cost graph also has to go through here. Okay, it has to touch here also. All right, and remember we said if a normal profit is made, my average cost curve, it has to come and lie on top of my average revenue graph. It has to be tangent because it has to touch at my point E. So watch how I do it first, and then you're going to do it also. Right, when we draw average cost, it has to look like a smiley. So we're going to go down, 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 aiming then for this point. All right, remember we said... Marginal cost must intersect average cost at the bottom of average cost, at average, at average um, cost's lowest point. So as soon as I touch my marginal cost, I must turn up. And there's my smiley. Okay, So down, down, down until I touch my profit maximization point because I want it to be equal to average revenue. There can be no open white space here. Okay, It has to touch. It can't cross over, but it has to touch my e equilibrium point here. And then it's also here. Can you see marginal cost is intersecting average cost at the bottom of the little bowl? All right. And then you turn up. And then you have to label, before you forget to label, this is average cost. Okay. And then you can see now, average cost at my profit maximization point here. My average cost is touching my average revenue. That means that my average revenue and my average cost is equal. Okay. Now, things that they can ask you based on this graph, okay, is going to be, for example, which market structure is represented in this graph. The minute you see the horizontal graph, it is a perfect market. They can ask you what is the profit maximizing output that would be, at profit maximization point, the output would be 100 units. They're going to ask you to define something, one of the costs, perfect market, anything re relevant definition. Okay, then they can ask you stuff like, why is this demand curve horizontal or elastic? Why is the individual producer a price taker? Some application kind of question. 
and then they normally ask a calculation for four marks, okay? In this case, they can ask you to calculate total revenue, they can ask you to calculate total cost, okay? Or they can ask you to calculate the profit. Now, we're going to do that now. I'm going to paste this quickly. Okay, and you're also please going to copy this calculation in your book because this serves as your example. Okay, in the activity, we're going to do lots and lots of this. Okay, so this is your graph. They can ask you, calculate, for example, the total revenue. Okay, so if you're calculating the total revenue, remember total revenue is price times quantity. All right, what is my price? At profit maximization. Everything revolves around profit maximization. So there's my profit maximization. Okay, if I have to calculate my total revenue. Okay, total revenue, you need to know your formulas, obviously. If you don't know your formulas, you cannot do this. Okay, and this will count four marks. So my price at profit maximization point. My price, you find your price on your demand curve. So my price is 10 Rand. And my quantity, they can obviously, they're not going to make it this easy. There will be other quantities here. You need to know at profit maximization point. What is my quantity? I go down. My quantity is 100. All right. So basically my total revenue is 1,000 Rand. Okay. They can ask you also to calculate total cost. All right, so if we go to total cost, total cost, now, up to this point, we have calculated total cost as fixed cost plus variable cost. Now, we don't have fixed cost and variable cost yet. We have other stuff. Okay, now, if you remember quickly, okay, I just quickly want to, okay, if you remember, the calculation for average cost, okay? The calculation for average cost is that average cost equals sorry, it's just slow. Okay, average cost equals your total cost over your quantity. All right, that is how we calculate average cost. Okay, but now we can use this formula to calculate the most total cost, okay? If you look at your graph, we have average cost, okay? There's my purple graph at profit maximization. My average cost, because the average cost touches here, my average cost is 10 Rand, okay? I have my quantity, it is 100. All right, so we're just going to use a different formula for total cost. Okay, it's not a new formula, it is the, another formula. Now we used this formula to calculate average cost. But now we're going to just scramble this formula around to in order so that we can calculate total cost. All right, so again, I said in the graph above, there's my profit maximization point. The purple graph was my average cost graph. So at profit maximization point, this, there is my purple graph there. The value is 10 Rand. My output level at this point is 100 Rand. Remember, everything is based on profit maximization point. So you will see that also my total cost is 1,000 Rand. Okay. And then if they ask you to calculate the profit, remember profit is total revenue minus total cost. Okay. And we said that my total revenue we calculated there. It is 1,000. Minus my total cost, we calculated here, it is also a thousand. So there is zero profit. Yeah? But remember, if there's zero profit, it doesn't mean that there's no profit. It means that the entrepreneur will only receive his normal profit. He doesn't receive nothing. His normal profit is included in this total cost. He has received his normal profit already. He's just getting no extra profit. Okay, so you're going to finish off your work now, and then before you take out your foodies and you start eating and stretching your legs and whatnot, 
You're going to send me a photo. I want to see a photo of the graph that you've drawn with me now. And I want to see proof that you copied these calculations under your graph. Thank you, grade 12s. I'll see you tomorrow.